This is grace for the guilty. The word that we've been sharing the last few weeks and, and letting us know the, how the world, the word can change our lives. For all have sinned and all have come short. Right. And we forget that right. so many times. Uh, I want to just summarize one familiar uh, passage of scripture that comes to my mind about how people act like they have no sin just because they get into the, the church world yeah. or they have this religious yeah. order about them, but they yeah. forget where grace brought yeah. them from, you know? Yeah. They hide behind their outfits or their robes or yeah. whatever, their phylacteries, you know, how yeah. the priests were in the Old Testament. But I, I love this uh, passage of scripture that John wrote about here. And he talked about that there was a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. Yeah. And there's a whole other message as the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Side note here, this is a whole other message. What they doing watching her? It's not like the woman was out in the street. What you doing hanging around the house? Right now, right now. Side note, a whole other message. But I want to get to this point here. The woman was taken into that act of adultery. And they were sitting there trying to trip Jesus up like they always was doing. Yeah. You know, they forget about how they can have the grace yeah. for the guilty as well. But they went there and they tempted him. They said, Moses' law commanded that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? According to the law, she should have been stoned because she was caught in the very act of adultery. And they were tempting him that they might accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger. He wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. And so when they continued to ask him, he lifted up himself and he said this to them. He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. See, that ties it back to for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. Yes. And Jesus picked it up in the earlier before Paul wrote about it in Romans. But he lets us, he that's without that sin among you, the group that's there, the group that found this woman, the group that made it a big deal to come and accuse and tattletale and to bring it all up. You that's brought all that, you without that sin, yes. go ahead and cast that first stone. That's right, that's right. That's Here's another side note message one day. The day that the stones fell. You know, you figure all of, of the guilt that we carry around and all we're doing sometimes is just throwing it at others, which is basically stuff that we've never made right in our own life. And we're looking for others to blame and to accuse. They weren't worried about the man, apparently, in that day and time. Like the gentleman here said, where was the man? Took two to do it. They just brought four women. According to the law, they were both to be stuck. Yeah, they were both. But Jesus said, he that's without the sin, let him cast that first stone. And the Bible says this. And when they heard it being convicted by their own conscience. See, something started going on up in that mind. And it's like, oh, well, me with no sin. I'm a scribe, I'm a Pharisee. They, they weren't supposed to have any sin. You know, touch nothing unclean. Everyone's always washing their hands, all this ceremonial stuff going on. But yet still, they stood there, and when they heard it, being convicted by their unconscious, went out one by one, beginning, listen, at the eldest, even unto the last. Right and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Their unconscious, you know, that inner being that tells you no, no, and you still keep doing it, yep. that conscience. Yep. It was letting them know real quick, you guilty. Yes, your conscience. You be, can be, your conscience can be your guide. It'd be your lead. But we try to override it. We try to make excuses. When you start making excuses, that's your sign right there. You do. So stop it. Don't do it. Whatever is forewarning you to not go through with what you're about to do or, or to try it again. But they heard it, and guess what? They left one by one till there was no one left. Yeah. Left him, and it said it left from the oldest to the last, the eldest that was there. And when they all realized, hey, I got some sin, or I have yeah. sin, I've been I'm, guilty. I'm guilty. That's what they started looking at. I've been guilty. Yeah. I, have, I got some sin in my life. I can't go around throwing stones at people. Yeah, this woman was caught in the very act. Question is, what was I doing around 
around there. Okay, okay. Was you next? Okay. <laughs> Help me. Sin is sin. We agreed a few weeks ago, sin's not going to heaven. Amen? Amen. And to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Okay? So here they realized, convicted by their own conscience, Jesus spoke to them. He didn't yay or nay them. He just said, him that's without sin, you go ahead and cast that first stone. And if Jesus was to say that to each of us tonight, how many of us would fire back off at these things that make us so upset and frustrated, huh? How many? What did we have to hold our peace to? I'm talking about there's grace for the guilty tonight. I get in that place sometimes too. This sister's not perfect. Y'all have seen that. But there's a remedy for our sins and for sinning. That remedy is Jesus. Now I can't tell y'all how he does it. I just know he does it. I can't, I can't even begin to describe there isn't enough words in the vocabulary of the English language that I'm aware of that can describe and tell you in full. There are a lot more elegant speakers and yeah. all that dramatic storyliners that can pull you in with a story and yeah. all that. Yeah. I ain't got it. Yeah. But I do got the word. Amen. That good old salvation, the change that will make in your heart and in your life when you ask Him to come into your heart. Yeah. And allow His Word to change you. His name is Jesus. And God sent Him to save you. Right. And to let us know that there is grace for the guilty tonight. Right. Are you guilty? Because there's grace. Amen. Are you in sin? There's a man called Jesus. Yes. Are you hurting? There's yes. a man called Jesus yes. that's a healer. Are you bound down by habits and addictions? Yes. There's a deliverer. His yes. name is called yes. Jesus. Yes. Oh, are you just hopeless tonight? There is a hope maker. His yeah. name is called Jesus. That's right. That's right. Amen. Are you frustrated and just tired of your toils and getting nowhere? Can I tell you to the one that says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. His name is Jesus. Yeah. That is what we're trying to tell us tonight. The grace for the guilty. He's there for you. Yeah. He wants to be there for you. And as we said briefly yesterday, to let them know, we can't blame God if we never ask Him into our lives. Can't blame God if we never ask Him for the direction Amen. Amen. and ask Him to help us. You can't blame God. Right. Right. Hallelujah. He wants you to invite Him into your life. Yeah. But we can we just so quick. God, why did you allow this to happen? Yeah. And then we don't rewind and think about all the decisions that we made prior yeah. to this happening in our lives. But we want to include Him when we find ourselves in trouble. But you know what? He makes peace. His name is Jesus. If there's trouble, Jesus. He can make peace in your life. 